Greetings. And today we are revising human evolution. And I'm pretty sure that we will not be able to do everything. So you still need to engage with your notes and exam guidelines to cover some stuff that we might not be able to cover in this revision session. So moving on to the learning objectives, we will be interpreting a phylogenetic tree to show the place of family hominidae in the animal kingdom. And we'll be looking at characteristics that humans share with African apes to show um, common ancestry or to prove common ancestry between African apes and humans. And we'll be looking at anatomical differences between African apes and humans with the aid of the diagrams, meaning you need to know the anatomical differences between humans and African apes theory wise, but also be able to see those differences when we are only given diagrams with no wording at all. And what you, sh what you should look at or what, sh what you should think about, you should think about bipedalism. So bipedalism basically means um, an ability of an organism to walk up upright with two feet. So that's, or just walk with two feet, that's bipedalism. And with bipedalism, you look at um, structures like the foramen magnum. H how is the foramen magnum positioned or where is it located in the skull for bipedalism organisms compared to um, quadrupedal species? And you also look at the spine, like what is the shape of the spine for the, bipeda the, the, bi the bipedal organisms or species compared to the quadrupedal uh, species and also we're going to look at the, the size of the the size as well as the shape of the pelvic girdle where like when comparing those species and we'll also look at the brain size like we'll compare the brain size of the african apes compared to the brain size of um, humans obviously african apes will have a smaller brain size and humans will have a larger brain size i'm already giving you the difference <laughs> and you have to know why that is the case like it links to intelligence the bigger the brain size that means the more intelligent that a, a certain species is but that doesn't apply that maybe it may apply but it may not necessarily apply to organisms of the same species that's what i'm trying to say because when we're checking the brain size we will be looking at the size of the skull because if the skull is big that means there is more space for the brain therefore the brain size will be larger and if the skull is small that means there is limited space for the brain to expand then the brain will be smaller and this that particular species will be less intelligent compared to the one with the bigger skull size and therefore bigger brain size if what I'm saying uh, makes sense. But that's why I'm saying it only applies to, not it only applies to, but we will focus on it when comparing different species or when comparing African apes and humans, not like comparing humans alone, because we'll start comparing people's head sizes of which that is not the aim of today's lesson or today's uh, revision. Next thing we're gonna focus on it is dentition that means the the dental formula when you're looking at the dental formula we're looking at the number of teeth together with the, the types of uh teeth those or uh, those species have so like why do we focus on that it, it is because the teeth will actually tell us about the the, the 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 way that that organism was was feeding if it was feeding on raw meat obviously the 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 shape of the teeth together with the type of the teeth will be different from an organism that was or that is feeding on cooked food then we will link that to evolution of course then we'll also look at the at, at, at prognathism 
Prognathism is just the slope of the face. How slopey the face is? Is it flat? Is it like is the jaw protruding? So we are looking just at the slope of the face when comparing African apes with human, with with humans. And we already know that that the African apes obviously will have a small a more slopey face compared to human beings. And we'll also look at the pallid shape. Like how is the, the, the shape of uh, the palate when comparing the African apes and humans? Also look at the cranial ridges when comparing uh, African apes and the human. And we'll look at the brow, at the brow ridge, ridges. How protruded are they when we are comparing African apes and humans? And the second last point, we will go straight to the Af out of Africa hypothesis. And lastly, we'll, we will be analyzing a phylogenetic tree, which you are more likely to be asked to analyze in your examination. So that's all around the objectives for this revision. Yeah, so to understand human classification, I just used the following mnemonic to help you understand human classification better. So we have King Philip came over for Great Supper. So K is kingdom. So we have to know that the, the humans belong to kingdom animalia. Then the phylum, they belong to phylum codata, which is the P for Philip. And with codata, something maybe that you, you, you may try to, or can you, you may choose to understand just to expand your knowledge. They belong to phylum codata merely because during their embryonic development, they have a, a notochord. So each and every animal that like during embryonic development start with having a, a, an autocode belong to phylum codata. And the question is, what is uh, an autocode? So it is like a midline embryo, uh, embryo structure. When, like when the embryo is developing, that mi midline structure that uh, kind of guides the organs that need to, to form after the embryo, then that's what we call um, an autocode. So each and every organism that possesses that, or not really possess, but that develops through that belong to phylum codata. So with the class, which is C for K, they belong to class mammalia. And the mammals are all those organism, organisms that give birth and also breastfeed. So every or organism that give birth to a live animal and also that uh, live young animal breastfeeds to like to the parent, then we call those uh, mammals. Then with the order, they are called uh, primates. So like the, the features of the primates, because you need to understand why are, are, are they called primates in the first place. So the, 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 the features or the characteristics of the primates are having an oppo opposable thumb. That means the thumb can be positioned in an opposite direction to the rest of the fingers and also having a, a five digit hand or five fingers in in a hand just like human beings because we're talking about humans here so all the 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 animals or the species whom their hands got five fingers can form a part of the order that is called the primates but also they need to have nails not claws so the like in summary the features of the order primates it's having an opposable thumb um, a hand with five fingers having nails not claws 
then um, having also two eyes that are facing forward so if an organism possesses those features and maybe the other features that i may not have uh, mentioned then those uh, organisms belong to the order that is called primates then with the family they belong to a family that is called hominidae and family hominidae is just a family of humans chimpanzees gorillas and orangutans i think orangutans are just a specific type of like a baboon because they look like it then with the genus which is the g they are called homo and the species is sapien or homo sapien and it should always be underlined since it is a scientific name as you might know that scientific name it is a must to underline scientific name scientific names if you are not gonna uh, write it in italics yeah so here you just need to familiarize yourself with this terminology uh, knowing like the, the hominids so with the hominids we're just talking about the great apes the orangutans the gorillas chimpanzees and modern humans with hominins it is a subgroup of hominids which only includes modern humans and early human ancestors that means when we're talking about hominins we're just talking about modern humans and human ancestors but when we're talking about hominids we're talking about great apes orangutans gorillas chimpanzees and modern humans with the primates i've already explained the order of uh, i mean the features of this order which is the primates in the previous slide then also we have to know what is a phylogenetic tree which is just a diagram showing an evolutionary an evolutionary relationship among various biological species and other entities based upon similarities and differences meaning when we, we will be analyzing at, when we will be analyzing our phylogenetic tree we will be looking at similarities and the differences that those organisms in our tree uh, have and yeah we'll be focusing on the physical and or genetic characteristics okay here you can just like pause and take notes if you have to because it's just the characteristics that humans share with african apes which is like reduced sense of uh, smell that means both humans and african apes got reduced sense of uh, of smell as i've written there that humans got 350 genes for olfactory receptors unlike mice as they have more than a thousand uh, olfactory receptors so what i mean by that if you have more olfactory receptors that means you will be more sensitive to smell or you will have a higher sense of smell compared to an organism with fewer olfactory receptors so that means the mice are more responsive to or are more sensitive to smell compared to human uh, beings as well as african apes and also uh, binocular vision that's the feature that humans and african apes share like binocular vision is just the ability to use both eyes but still see one um, object if you are looking at your pen you'll be looking at it with both eyes but you will still see one pen not each eye seeing its own pen and also bipedalism which is the ability to walk using two feet then uh, sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism is just uh, a it's, it's, it's that it is that distinct difference in terms of the genders of the this the same species by just looking at them for example if you are looking at a female with like humans by just seeing without having to undress them you can see that this is a female 
as well as when we are seeing a male, you can see that, okay, this is a male without having to look at their uh, genitals. So that, that is the same with African apes. You can tell a male and a female African ape, ape by just looking at them without having to check the genitals. That is what we term as sexual dimorphism. With, um, with another uh, uh, characteristic that is common between humans and African apes, it is that part of the brain that processes information from the hands and the eyes are enlarged. But you might, you, you might not understand these and you, you don't really need to, but just to expand your understanding of the topic, you can think about what is called cortical mapping or homunculus of the brain. You can maybe Google that like homunculus or cortical mapping of the brain. Then you will see that the hands are heavily supplied as well as the eyes. As a result, the eye is more sensitive than maybe the thigh, for example. That means a thigh is not as heavily supplied by the nerves when we are comparing it, it to the hands as well as the eyes. Yeah. Another example would be when you injured your, your hand, like a hand is painful, maybe is more pain, it is more painful when you injured your hand than maybe when you injured your thigh, for example, which proves that the hands are heavily supplied by the nerves compared to compared to the eyes. Also, a common characteristic again it is the large brain size. As much as the brain size of the African ape, apes is a little bit uh, smaller than those of humans, but in general they both have a large brain size. Also, free rotating arms that is self-explanatory and elbow joints allowing rotation of the forearm. That means the forearm can rotate in both humans and African apes. Flat nails instead of claws, like both African apes and humans cut nails instead of claws. And also opposable thumb. That means a, a, their thumb can, can be able to be put in an opposite position to the rest of the fingers. So I've just used a table to show the differences between African apes and humans. And I've split them in such a manner that we'll be looking at one characteristic. Then with that characteristic, we will be focusing on the, the difference that um, African apes and humans have with regards to that specific feature. For example, with cranium. The cranium of humans is larger and the cranium of African apes is smaller. The brow ridges, the brow ridges in humans are not well developed and the brow ridges in African apes are well developed. By this they mean the brow ridges are more protruding in humans. I mean um, are less protruding in humans and are way more protruding in African apes. Like the spine, the spine in humans is more curved and the spine in African apes is less curved. So you just have to go through this diagram to remind yourself of the differences that um, these two species have. You can just pause the video and jot down the notes if you have to. Otherwise, I'm not going to go through the rest of the features as they are self-explanatory. So moving on to the out of Africa hypothesis. So firstly, we have to understand what is the out of Africa hypothesis. So this is an hypothesis that suggests that humans originated in Africa, then migrated out of Africa to all other parts of the world. Meaning every human being that is alive today is linked to an ancestor that was found in Africa. Then to back up this hypothesis, we will look at the fossil evidence, the Y chromosome, and the mitochondrial DNA. With fossil evidence, we will be looking at different types of fossils or at different types of old fossils 
that we found in Africa. So if those old fossils as well or on fossil evidence are all found in Africa, that means the those species that we we found uh, their fossils were living in Africa because their fossils are found in Africa. So it backs it backs up it, it backs up the hypothesis that all humans originated in Africa. Because if the oldest, very oldest uh, fossils of these species was far were found in Africa, then it means um, every other spe species that originated after the old one was also found in in Africa. If what I'm saying makes sense, let's just do a crazy example. If the if my my mother is no more and the bones of my mother are found in the Eastern Cape, that means even though I'm I'm not living in the Eastern Cape now, but I originated from the Eastern Cape because those that are older than me or those that I arised from were found in the Eastern Cape. So there is no way that I, 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 I was like I originated maybe in, in the Western Cape when the bones of my forefathers are in the Eastern Cape because those are actually the, the, the people I arised from. So this is the same concept here. We are looking at the oldest fossils that were found in Africa to back up the hypothesis that um, the humans originated in Africa. So you can just pause the video and jot down those fossils as well as the locations that they were found in. So we have Taung Child or Astro Australopithecus Africanus, which was found in Northern Cape. Northern Cape is in South Africa, and South Africa is in Africa. There is Mrs. Pless, which is Australopithecus Africanus as well, which was discovered at Stetsfontein, and Stetsfontein, I think it is in Bloemfontein. Then there is uh, Paranthropus robustus, which is an extinct species of hominin. You might remember the the, the the term hominin in the introduction to to this revision and also it was discovered in, in Stetsfontein. Same thing here, we can look at the early Homo sapien which is found in Free State, the Paranthropus Boise which is found in Tanzania, Tanzania is a country in Africa, Homo habilis, the oldest fossils of Homo habilis were also found in Tanzania. There is Silanthropus here, Silanthropus uh, chadensis, which was found in Chad. And Chad is a country in, in Central Africa. So with fossil evidence, you just have to know, like in summary now, you just have to know, okay, there is this fossil and it was found in this place. Obviously, all these places are found in Africa then that is like a backup evidence that really the, I mean, all humans originated in Africa. Now, moving forward to the DNA Y chromosome. So here we really have to think back to the lessons we had in reproduction. We need to have a deep understanding of, um, not really deep, but some understanding of reproduction as well as meiosis. So here we, with the DNA Y chromosome, we have to check what does the DNA Y chromosome tell us about um, the oldest uh, ancestor of all human beings being found in Africa or what does it tell us about the hypothesis that all humans originated in Africa. So uh, the, the knowledge that you, you, you must have, you have to understand that the Y chromosome is only found in male. That's the first. So it is a chromosome that, 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 that makes male 
female. And also, that Y chromosome doesn't undergo crossing over. This is a very important point. Like, the Y chromosome doesn't undergo crossing over. So what is the, the, the role of crossing over? It is share, share, sharing genetic material to ensure that there is variation. Like one of the reasons for crossing over or one of the main reasons for crossing over is variation to make sure that we are different from one another. But the Y chromosome doesn't undergo crossing over, meaning there is no variation in the Y chromosome. So they used the Y chromosome because there is no variation to link us to an ancestor that lived in Africa or to a man that or to a man or a male ancestor that lived in Africa uh, 60,000 years ago. But I was just like summarizing and giving you an understanding why does the DNA from the Y chromosome back up the out of Africa hypothesis. So for exam purposes, you can just pause the video, jot down your notes and write this as it is. I was just like summarizing. So with the mitochondrial DNA, you also need some background information or you need to already have information around the mitochondrial DNA from reproduction to understand why the mitochondrial DNA backs up the hypothesis that all uh, humans originated in Africa. So what you need to understand about the mitochondrial DNA is that during fertilization, meaning when the sperm fuses with, with the egg, there is no sharing of DNA as other, there's no sharing of mitochondrial DNA rather. What actually happens, the sperm swim, swims towards uh, the egg, then when it reaches the egg, it uses its head to like to, 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 to get inside the egg in simpler, in simpler terms. But when it gets inside, there is what is called, there is a membrane in the, in, the, in the ovum or in the egg that is called uh, zona pellucida, if I'm not mistaken. So when that zona pellucida is closing, it cuts off the neck of the, it cuts off the neck of a sperm, meaning only the head of the sperm enters the ovum or enters the, the egg cell. And you have to understand that the, 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 the mitochondrion of a sperm is found on its neck towards its body. So when that zona pellucida cuts the, 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 the neck and only the, the head enters, that means the sperm enters the ovum or the sperm enters the egg cell with no mitochondrion. My, mitochondrion. Only the mitochondrion of the female or only the mitochondrion in the egg will actually be inside uh, a zygote. So that's why now when we are, we are using the mitochondrial DNA, we are saying it is a female, not really a female lineage, but um, yeah, it is a female lineage because we, we, we are looking at that mitochondrial DNA to trace the, 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 the female ancestor of all humans alive. As I've explained there, that it is handed from mother to child uh, by following mutant nu nucleotides and mitochondrial DNA, then we are able to trace our female line of descent. A mutation take place here at a faster rate, which is an advantage and leads to ancestral female in East Africa who lived um, 150,000 years ago. So in summary, like using that mitochondrial DNA, it was then linked to um, it was linked to a female ancestor who lived in East Africa 150,000 years ago, which backs up evidence that we we all originated from Africa. Because if 
our, our female ancestor is found in Africa. That means everyone who arised from that female ancestor is linked to Africa as well. Uh, just going through the definition of the phylogenetic tree. So this is just a diagram that shows uh, an evolutionary, this is a very important term, an evolutionary relationship among various biological species or other entities based upon similarities and differences in their physical or genetic characteristics. So this is like um, a tree of descent. That's when we check like which species evolved from which or from which ancestor but in the next slides we will be showing how do we analyze or how do we conclude that a specific um, organism is an ancestor of a, a certain species for example uh, you can pause the video if you want to take notes I'm just going to mention something I feel is more important. So in your phylogenetic tree, the species at the bottom, if they put it this way, is the oldest and the one at the top is um, the youngest or the most recent. Same applies if they started from the left and other organisms st started branching from it, you know that the, the, the very first one is the past and the last branch is the most uh, recent. Again here when checking ancestry uh, as I've written here, so this is just a unique uh, ancestor of C. That means it is an ancestor of only C. But when you check here, this is a shared ancestor of B and C. Why? Because both B and C arise here then when you check here this is a common ancestor of all the tree because a arised from here b arised from here and c arised from here meaning as you move downwards where you 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 moving towards the the ancestor which with i mean with many um descendants an example as we close the, 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 the session, um, A is the ancestor of all, if you check, because each and every organism that is in this phylogenetic tree arised from A. Without A, there wouldn't be any. Then when you check B, B only branches to the gibbons, the orangutans, gorillas, humans, chimpanzees, and bonobos. Then C only starts from orangutans to human. D is just a common ancestor of the humans and the chimpanzees and the bonobos. And E just represents the most uh, recent species. So this is how you like analyze a phylogenetic tree.